Senator from Georgia. Madam President, I rise today in strong opposition to H.R. 4173, and I think it's interesting to note that uh, we've had a number of speakers of the proponents of this legislation to come forward, uh, just as my good friend from Maryland just did, and said that we're going to be the leader. The United States is going to be the leader in the financial world market with these changes. Well, the fact of the matter is that other countries that have uh, strong financial markets have said publicly just the opposite. And what I'm afraid we're setting ourselves up for, and what I talked about a lot during the course of the debate on the floor relative to this bill, is that what we're going to wind up doing is we're going to be driving jobs and business overseas with this massive piece of legislation that truly doesn't address the problem. Madam President, there's nothing in these 2,300 pages that deals with the primary catalyst of market instability in our economy the bailout be must Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. This bill simply ignores the devastating impact that these two entities continue to have, not only on our capital markets, but also on our nation's deficit, already demanding over $145 billion in taxpayer assistance and with no end in sight as to what it's ultimately going to cost the taxpayers of this country. And the newly created Consumer Protection Bureau is an affirmation that the proponents of the legislation have acknowledged government failures were a significant cause of our economic turmoil, but they still believe that bigger government is the solution going forward, and that despite failure after failure among various regulatory agencies, that a new agency is the answer to these shortcomings, and that this time it's going to be different. Instead of addressing the problems of the consumer protections in place under our current regulatory structure, this new oversight agency is an added layer of bureaucracy with the authority to examine and enforce new regulations for not only all mortgage-related businesses, but also small mom-and-pop businesses on Main Street, like payday lenders, check cashers, and other non-financial firms. These types of entities were clearly not the cause of the economic crisis, and yet they will now be subject to the same regulations as the large financial institutions on Wall Street. This is simply another example of the majority party's preference for a one-size-fits-all regulatory structure stifling economic growth. Having participated in the conference committee, I unfortunately witnessed firsthand the complete disregard for addressing the real issues at hand. As ranking member of the Agriculture Committee, I have spent a great deal of time understanding the over-the-counter derivatives market, its, its complexities, and its legitimate utility. I have found that both Republicans and Democrats generally agree on the major issues relating to derivatives regulation. We all generally agree that there needs to be greater transparency, registration, more clearing, and compliance with a whole host of business conduct and efficient market operation regulations. And this is important because it is a 180 degree shift away from current law where over-the-counter swaps are essentially unregulated today. Within this general agreement that swaps need to go from unregulated to fully regulated, we have had disagreements about who should be required to clear their transactions and how best to require swaps to be transacted and reported. And these disagreements are significant because they involve real burdens and duties which will result in real costs to businesses and consumers. I want to make sure our new regulations are targeted to serve a useful purpose. Unfortunately, this legislation will enable regulators to impose restrictions on businesses that had absolutely nothing to do with creating the financial crisis. Every industry in the country uses derivatives to manage their business risks, and many of them will now be forced to clear their derivative transactions. This seems simple enough until you realize that clearing does not make risk within the financial system disappear. Risk is simply transferred from the individual counterparties to the clearinghouses, a service provided at considerable expense in the form of margin posted to the clearinghouse. So this bill would not eliminate risk, 
but it simply transfers risk from one place to another and imposes costs on market participants that had nothing to do with creating the financial crisis. I truly fear that consumers will ultimately pay the price. For example, this legislation would force the farm credit system institutions to run their interest rate swaps through a clearinghouse, which will result in additional costs in the form of higher interest rates to their customers without doing anything to lessen the systemic risk. And let me clear, be clear as to who this will ultimately affect. And it is very clear that our farmers and ranchers, our electric cooperatives, and our ethanol facilities who seek financing from these institutions will bear this burden. Institutions like CoBank will be forced to clear their swaps and execute them on a trading facility which will impose significant new costs and result in higher rates for their customer, or worse, discourage them from managing their risk, which will again result in higher costs for their borrowers. And why? Because this legislation broadly applies regulation, treating all financial institutions the same. CoBank and Goldman Sachs are not the same and should not be regulated in the same manner. CoBank should have the option to clear their swaps, not mandated to do so. While the conference report provides an exemption for some business from this derivative clearing mandate, it also imposes new margin requirements on derivative dealers for these same uncleared transactions. And who will likely pay for these new margin requirements in the form of higher fees? Again, it's pretty clear that the public and private companies across the nation that had nothing to do with the financial crisis and that are simply seeking to minimize risk will bear this burden. The entire point of exempting some of them from the clearing mandate was to ensure that they do not bear the burden of increased margin costs. But this language would indirectly subject these businesses to the expense of margins imposed on their dealer counterparties, counterparties that will be forced to recoup this cost in the form of fees and businesses will be forced to pass their costs on to consumers. And Madam Chairman, I would encourage all members of this body to look at yesterday's Wall Street Journal. There's a front page story on derivatives. And when we get on here, the floor here and start debating derivatives, most people's eyes glaze over because it is complex and, and an issue that um, is very difficult to understand. But in that article, it explains the simplicity that, um, uh, that the derivatives world um, uh, imparts itself in. Because what the article talks about is it goes through a stage of a farmer in Nebraska and his use of derivatives. And then his ultimate purchaser of his product, the rancher, and how that rancher uses derivatives to eliminate risk and hopefully guarantee a profit in his business. And then how the slaughterhouse takes um, uh, the product from the livestock operator, the, the barn market operator, and uses derivatives in their business. And then ultimately, the guy that owns the trucking company and how he uses derivatives. And it's very clear in this article that these guys' life is gonna change from a business perspective. And they're not gonna be able to use derivatives in the way that they have used it before. They had nothing to do with the financial crisis that developed in this country. But yet, they're going to be treated once again in the same way as a Goldman Sachs or other major swaps and derivatives dealers. Also related to derivatives, there were considerable improvements made to the so-called swap desk push-out provision. And I commend the, the chairman for his work on that. Banks would be able to continue to engage in interest rate and foreign currency swaps, which is essential to the business of banks. However, I remain concerned that forcing swap dealer banks to spin off their commodity trading will hurt those utilities and airlines wishing to hedge their energy risk in the immediate future. They will be forced to establish new credit ratings and standings with these affiliates rather than take advantage of their long-standing relationship with their current bank. And I fail to understand why forcing these entities to spin off any aspect of their swap business is necessary.
I wholeheartedly support efforts to make the swaps market more transparent. It needs to be. And I believe this will be accomplished once regulators have access to the data, which has to date been completely unavailable to them. The public will benefit from knowing who is participating in these markets, and we will finally have the data we need to make informed policy decisions related to derivatives. Our economy needs more opportunities for all businesses to grow and prosper. Time and again, it is the small and medium-sized businesses that create the lion's share of jobs after a major economic recession. And we need to foster and incubate these small and medium-sized businesses right now and not hamper them. We need to ensure that they are able to access capital and manage their risk through the use of derivatives. Right now, there are a lot of these small and medium-sized companies that are ready to expand but cannot get adequate access to capital because lenders are saying that it's too risky and regulators won't allow these lenders to help. So, Madam President, I believe that there is a need to respond to what went wrong in our financial system, and I support doing so in a responsible way that will continue to allow Main Street businesses to manage their risk appropriately, hold, these responsible, hold those responsible for this mess accountable, and not create huge new government bureaucracies. Unfortunately, this legislation falls short of these goals. I am pleased that the chairman of the banking committee is here because I do want to say publicly, and I've told him this privately, and I will continue to say it, that he had a very difficult job. And while we disagreed on a lot of major issues here, he was always open for discussion. He uh, allowed participation on the floor as well as discussions off the floor. And for that, I thank him. He knows that uh, I obviously cannot vote for this bill, but uh, he has proven himself to be a uh, very valued member of the Senate by the way he's conducted himself throughout this whole process. And for that, I thank him. Madam Chairman, I yield the floor. Madam President, before Senator from Connecticut. Before my colleague from Georgia leaves, let me thank him as well. And uh, of course, hope always brings a turn.